This has been an interesting project to document, since my approach to making it has been a bit different. Normally I make one bomb site, then make the jump to an entire level, relying on constant playtesting to round it all off into a balanced map. With this one, I developed two bomb sites separately. Now I'm at the stage where I need to make them into one whole map. Firstly, I positioned the two bomb sites, getting the rotation and position roughly right. I based this on how large I felt the map needed to be, and which ways the terrorists and counter-terrorists should come from. Immediately I saw problems. Bombsite A's terrorist entrance is now situated in the middle of nowhere. This is something that, with hindsight, I could have spotted when first making that bombsite, since it's located at the exact opposite corner to the counter-terrorist spawn. Still, this stage is difficult enough without worrying about things like that. I made a quick map around the bombsites for me to be able to playtest, adding a bit of detail to the middle area of the map. It was at this stage that I suddenly realised that I had made a big mistake by leaving it to this stage before finalising the layout of the map. By including these other areas, they would change the balance of the bomb sites anyway, so I'd be left with the worst of both worlds, unbalanced bomb sites and a weak layout. I played a couple of rounds on this version of the map before going back to the drawing board. It hit me that the bomb sites that I'd already made were more than just that. For example, B was a lot more than just a simple bomb site. It included a fair bit of surrounding area as well. And if I simply change the position of the entrance to bomb site A and carefully, delicately squish the two bomb sites together, I could have a working map. Maybe. Probably not. I'm definitely pleased that I refrained from adding detail to my map up till now. I did it with little extra work. I added some stairs in the middle and added some short corridors to stop people from falling off the sides of the map, but all in all the bomb sites retained their balance and there was very little dead space in the map that seemed bland and pointless. I decided that now would be a good time to playtest with other people and the feedback was positive. The first adjustments I made were simple things like closing up holes in the floor or making walls taller so that people couldn't escape from the map. At one point I saw a bot standing on the edge of the map and felt somewhat outsmarted. Needless to say, that exploit wasn't around for long. And neither was the bot. Shortly after this, and with positive feedback regarding the layout on my side, I deliberately tried to make big changes to the map. Until now, I had been very protective of the bomb sites from their original separate versions. Though since joining them up, they had taken on different personalities. Some areas were now underused, while others got far more action. B got some interesting changes. I moved the bomb site further across to give this stretch of the map some more purpose. It also distanced it from the diagonal area which would serve as the middle area of the map. One of the biggest changes I made was to close up this entrance to B from CT spawn and to replace it with a slightly longer route. Doing this didn't fix any huge problems with the map and didn't create any new ones. It just served to delay CTs from getting to a strong camping spot by a second or two and simplified the layout of the map a bit. I guess that this also helped encourage people to use the other entrance to the bomb site a bit more, though playtesting didn't feel too different afterwards. You'll notice that the cover in my map tends to be either less than or greater than 64 units in height. I've always hated default height crates as it feels gimmicky and awkward to have to have a gunfight over the cover that's exactly at eye level. I'd rather give people the choice of complete cover or cover with good visibility. Or none at all. I'm not alone in this. Compare Counter-Strike Source's Dust 2 crates with those in Counter-Strike Go. In my opinion, this makes the battles a lot more fun and less about lucky shots. Both terrorists and counter-terrorists have an out-of-the-way route to the far side of both bomb sites now, which put them in a stronger position than hedging their bets with the middle routes, at the expense of being screwed if the other team anticipated a rush of that sort. I'm hoping that this will encourage team play and deeper tactics should this map ever be used competitively. And there you have it, a near finished layout for my new map. I have enjoyed watching this map develop and grow, and at some stages shrink. I have also been surprised by the amount of negative feedback from people on these videos that I have uploaded, since I don't know what these comments are based on. Is it just from watching these videos and making comparisons with this map against other diffuse maps? I deliberately chose a more enclosed, cover based layout for this map, and through playtesting it has remained the most fun style for this map. It was something that I had decided to do from an early stage, especially since most of my maps end up too large and open. This project has taught me a lot about map design, and I have enjoyed overcoming problems in my path and playing the map at different stages with other people. Some have playtested almost every version of the map from the beginning, and for that I am grateful. It would be interesting to know from your views how you feel the map has progressed, and if there were any changes that I did that you didn't expect or disagree with. Anyway, time to make this map look nice.